Good evening. This SIM800L module and this Arduino Uno are going to send me a text message if, for instance, this wagon of our robot would be in danger of falling down from its rail. For the experiments of today, the cheapest prepaid SIM card will do. This cost me $4 and allows me to send 115 text messages. That should be plenty enough. I prepared a card by putting it into some mobile phone. By using the PIN code of the new card, I log into it and change its settings so that the card won't ask anymore for those PIN codes. I close the phone, remove the SIM card and put it into the module. This SIM 800L GSM module costs $8 at eBay. And this Arduino Uno costs about $3. I connect this SIM TXD pin of the module to the pin number 10 of the Arduino Uno. And this SIM RXD pin to Arduino Uno's pin number 11. I connect a ground pin of the module to a ground pin of the Arduino Uno. And I connect this 5V pin of the module to Arduino Uno's 5V pin. At my computer, I now start the Arduino IDE software. If you don't have that software yet, see the video number 10 on how to install one. The power from a computer's USB port isn't quite sufficient for a GSM module. But for instance, this 9V battery is able to deliver the needed amount of current for the module and simultaneously for our Arduino Uno as well. As the system is now powered up, I check that the Arduino IDE software is aware of the presence of our Arduino Uno board. I choose File, Examples, Software Serial, Software Serial Example. Let me remove these comment lines so that you can see that this program is quite simple one. It uses the normal serial port that is connected to our computer and it generates one additional serial port, namely the one that we just connected to our GSM module. And the program itself does nothing else but forwards all messages from one serial port to another. For today's experiments, I needed to lower that speed to about 9600 baud. I choose Tools Serial Monitor and I check that the speed of that serial communication is also here set to those 9600 baud. And here it is probably wisest to choose this carriage return option. Then I choose Sketch Upload and I get some greetings to the serial monitor. Now I type into this input box the simplest of all the attention commands, namely the plain AT, and we are happy to get an OK response, and now we know that the connection to the GSM module is working. And from this Adafruit tutorial we find some other AT commands that can be used for testing our system. For instance, this command here sets a GSM module into a for us practical mode where all the text messages are represented as readable text. This other command consists of at least two lines. Here we defined to whom we are about to send our text message. In this demonstration I use my own telephone number. And here is the actual text message. The ending character of a text message should be Ctrl Z, or in other words, the ASCII character 26. Unfortunately, Arduino IDE's serial monitor doesn't accept the combination of the Ctrl and Z keys. So, Probably the easiest way to generate that character is to ask our example program to send such a character into the module. 
now as I upload this modified program and as the needed control Z gets written into the GSM module, the module finally sends our text message and indeed after few seconds the message arrives into my mobile phone. And by adding these few lines, I get a program that is able to send text messages automatically. These end stop switches cost less than half a dollar. If I add such a mechanical switch to Arduino Uno's pin number 2 and add these few lines to our program, I get a system that sends into somebody's mobile phone a text message if a certain button is being pressed. Let's make something valuable out of that system. If we place an end stop switch here, we would get an immediate notification to our mobile phone if something weird would happen and if that wagon would be in danger of dropping out from its rail and a big end stop switch at that place would also mechanically obstruct the wagon from falling from its rail. And it would be easy to disconnect our robot stepper motor from its power source if the wagon should touch that switch. End stop switches are also often used as reference points for accurate positioning of a robot. Here, for instance, I may now place our wagon into any place of its rail. I start a program that at a low speed and in a safe way drives the wagon up to the point where the end stop fires its signal. And now the robot knows where its wagon is positioned. Thank you for joining us today. I do hope that this video has been useful for you. Goodbye, take care.